This video demonstrates how to set up and perform x-rays of the hip and lower extremity. In this video, the first projection of each body region will be described in full, and subsequent radiographic projections will be described briefly, highlighting the differences only. Equipment required for radiographic projections of the hip and lower extremity includes an upright or table bucky, cassettes of the following sizes, 8 by 10 inch, 10 by 12 inch, and 14 by 17 inch, a protective lead shield for the patient, an assortment of lead markers, radiolucent sponges and tape to help with positioning, an x-ray generator and x-ray tube protective housing assembly, a control panel behind a protective lead line barrier, and a computer radiography system. For an AP axial toe, Select the non-bucky and small focal spot setting. Set the exposure parameters to between 50 and 55 kilovolts, or KV, and 2 to 3 milliamperseconds, or MAS. Ask the patient to lie supine on the radiographic table and place the cassette under the foot. Set the source to image receptor distance, or SID, to 40 inches. An SID of 40 inches is the same for all lower limb projections unless stated otherwise. Place a protective lead shield over the patient's pelvic area. Flex the patient's legs. Alternatively, the unaffected leg may also be fully extended. Align the plantar aspect of the toe with the center of the cassette. Turn on the collimation light and angle the central ray 15 degrees towards the head. Center the central ray to the affected toe's metatarsophalangeal, or MTP, joint. Collimate to include the phalanges, MTP joint and distal metatarsal of the affected toe. Place the appropriate lead marker within the field of collimation. Move behind the protective lead barrier. Adjust the exposure factors as necessary and ask the patient to keep still. Expose the cassette by pressing the prep button. Then when ready, press the exposure button. Once the exposure is completed, inform the patient that they may relax. Remove the cassette, insert it into the image plate reader, and proceed to the next projection. In an AP oblique projection of the first toe, rotate the patient's leg and foot medially and align their toe with the center of the cassette. Set the central ray to the first metatarsophalangeal joint. Expose the cassette and process. A lateral toe projection may be either a lateral medial or a medial lateral projection. To position the first and second toes in the lateral medial projection, ask the patient to rotate their entire body towards the affected side. Assist the patient to extend their affected leg with both the lower limb and foot in a lateral medial position. Move the opposite leg in front of the affected limb. Separate the toes by using tape wrapped around the unaffected toes. Ask the patient to pull on the tape to move the other toes away from the affected toe. Align the toe with the center of the cassette. For the first toe, direct the central ray to the first interphalangeal joint. Process and analyze all images obtained. To obtain an AP axial projection of the foot, place a 10 by 12 inch cassette lengthwise on the tabletop. The exposure factors are similar to those of the toe, except KV is 55 to 60 and MAS is 3 to 4. Ask the patient to lie supine and flex their affected leg. The opposite leg can either be flexed or extended. Align the foot with the center of the cassette. Angle the central ray 10 degrees cephalad to the center of the cassette. Set the angled central ray to the base of the third metatarsal. Collimate to include the phalanges, metatarsals, tarsal bones, and surrounding soft tissues. Place the appropriate lead marker. Complete the radiographic exposure. For an AP oblique projection of the foot, rotate the leg and foot medially until the plantar aspect of the foot is 30 to 40 degrees to the plane of the cassette. Direct the central ray to the base of the third metatarsal. To obtain a lateral or mediolateral projection of the foot, ask the patient to rotate their entire body towards the affected side. Flex the knee of the same side to 45 degrees. Align the foot with the center of the cassette and direct the central ray as before. Instruct the patient to extend their opposite leg behind the affected limb. 
Ask the patient to dorsiflex their foot to 90 degrees. Expose, process accordingly, and review the images obtained. For a plantodorsal axial projection of the calcaneus, select the non-bucky and small focal spot setting. Set the exposure parameters to between 60 and 65 kilovolts and 4 to 6 MAS. Ask the patient to sit on the radiographic table and align the mid-angle with the center of the cassette. Make sure the foot is dorsiflexed and vertical. Place a length of gauze or tape around the mid to distal aspect of the foot. Ask the patient to gently pull on the tape to align the plantar aspect of the foot perpendicular to the cassette. Check that the malleoli are equidistant to the cassette. Angle the central ray to 40 degrees cephalad. Direct the central ray to the base of the third metatarsal. Collimate to include the calcaneus, tallocalcaneal joint, base of the fifth metatarsal, and soft tissue structures. Place the appropriate lead marker. Expose the cassette and process. For a mediolateral projection of the calcaneus, the central ray is set perpendicular to the image receptor and the KV value is between 55 and 60. Rotate the patient's entire body towards the affected side. With the knee flexed to 45 degrees and the other leg behind it, ask the patient to dorsiflex the foot to 90 degrees. A sponge can be placed under the affected knee to position the lower limb and foot in a true lateral position. Set the central ray to one inch below the medial malleolus. Collimate to include the ankle joint, calcaneus, navicular, and cuboid. Expose the cassette and analyze all images obtained. For an AP angle projection, set the KV to between 55 and 60. Position the patient supine with legs extended and separated slightly. Place an 8 by 10 inch cassette lengthwise on the tabletop. Align the ankle to the center of the cassette. Allow the foot to remain in a natural position with the foot only slightly dorsiflexed or not at all. Align the central ray perpendicular to the midpoint between the malleoli. Collimate to include the distal tibia and fibula, lateral and medial malleoli, proximal metatarsals, and soft tissue structures. Place the appropriate lead marker. Expose the cassette and proceed to the next projection. To obtain an AP mortise ankle, which is an anterior oblique projection, select a 10 by 12 inch cassette and orient it lengthwise on the table. Ask the patient to rotate their entire leg and foot medially 15 to 20 degrees. The line between the malleoli should be parallel to the cassette. Allow the foot to remain in a natural position with the foot only slightly dorsiflexed or not at all. To obtain an AP oblique projection of the ankle mortis anatomy and the base of the fifth metatarsal, instruct the patient to dorsiflex their foot. Ensure the plantar aspect is almost perpendicular to the cassette. Rotate the entire leg and foot medially 45 degrees. Direct the central ray to the midpoint between the malleoli. For a mediolateral projection of the ankle, the entire body is rotated towards the affected side. A protective lead shield is placed appropriately. Flex the knee of the affected side 45 degrees. Move the other leg behind the affected limb. Dorsiflex the foot to 90 degrees. Align the central ray to the medial malleolus. Collimate to include the distal tibia and fibula, calcaneus, navicular, cuboid, base of the fifth metatarsal, and soft tissue structures. Expose and process the cassette and analyze the images obtained. To obtain an AP tibia fibula projection, set the SID and exposure factors, adjust the KV to between 55 and 60, and MAS to between 2 and 3. To decrease the effect of the X-ray beam divergence, an increased SID of 44 or 48 inches and increased MAS value may be used. Select and place a 14 by 17 inch cassette diagonally on the table. Ensure the pelvis and lower limb are not rotated. Instruct the patient to dorsiflex their foot to 90 degrees where possible. Align the tibia and fibula to the center of the cassette. Ensure the femoral condyles are equidistant to the tabletop.
The lower leg and ankle remain in a natural position. Place a protective lead shield over the patient's pelvic area. Align the central ray perpendicular to the midpoint of the tibia and fibula. Collimate the light field to include the knee and ankle joints, tibia and fibula, and soft tissue structures. Place the appropriate lead marker. Complete the radiographic exposure. To obtain a lateral tibia fibula projection, ask the patient to rotate their entire body towards the affected side. Flex the knee of the affected side 45 degrees and position the other leg behind the affected limb. Confirm correct positioning by palpating the malleoli and patella. Ensure that the knee and ankle joints are included. Direct the central ray to the midpoint of the tibia and fibula. Expose, process, and review the images obtained for all projections. Obtain an AP projection of the knee by selecting an 8 by 10 inch cassette. Orient it lengthwise in the table bucky. Align the central ray perpendicular to the center of the image receptor. Once locked, move the X-ray tube assembly a few inches to the side to avoid the patient bumping their head on it. Select the table bucky and small focal spot on the control panel. Set the exposure parameters to between 60 and 65 kV and 12 to 16 MAS. Position the patient supine on the radiographic table, extend their legs and separate them slightly. Check that the pelvis, knee, and lower limb are not rotated. Align the knee to the center of the image receptor. Rotate the affected leg medially 3 to 5 degrees to bring the line between the femoral condyles parallel with the image receptor. Check that the patella is oriented towards the medial aspect of the knee. Set the central ray a half inch distal to the apex of the patella. Collimate the light field to include the distal femur, knee joint, proximal tibia and fibula, and soft tissue structures. Place the appropriate lead marker. Complete the radiographic exposure and proceed to the next projection. An AP medial oblique knee projection has similar criteria to an AP knee projection. Rotate the patient's leg medially to 45 degrees. Align the knee to the center of the image receptor. Ensure the line between the femoral condyles is at 45 degrees to the image receptor. Set the central ray a half inch distal to the apex of the patella and to the middle of the knee. To obtain an AP lateral oblique knee projection, rotate the leg laterally 45 degrees. Check that the line between the femoral condyles is at 45 degrees to the image receptor. Align the central ray half an inch below the apex of the patella and to the middle of the knee. A lateral knee is a mediolateral projection. Set the KV between 55 and 60 and MAS between 6 and 8. Ask the patient to rotate their entire body towards the affected side. Ensure that their femur and knee are in contact with the tabletop. Flex the affected knee 20 to 30 degrees and ask the patient to extend their other leg. Direct the central ray 5 to 7 degrees cephalad to the center of the image receptor. Align the central ray one inch inferior to the medial condyles of the femur. Palpate to confirm the patella and superimposed femoral epicondyles are perpendicular to the cassette. Process, then analyze the images obtained for all projections. Obtain an AP mid and distal femur projection. Select a 14 by 17 inch cassette, orient it lengthwise in the table bucky. Align the central ray perpendicular to the center of the image receptor. Select the table bucky and small focal spot setting on the control panel. Set the KV between 65 to 70 and MAS to 16 to 20. Place a protective shield over the patient's reproductive organs. Rotate their affected leg and foot medially. Align the lower femur to the center of the image receptor. The knee joint should be positioned 2 inches above the lower border of the image receptor. Set the central ray to the mid-shaft of the femur to include the knee joint. Collimate the light field on all four sides to include the mid to distal femur, knee joint, and soft tissue structures. Expose the cassette. To obtain an AP mid and proximal femur, rotate the foot 15 to 20 degrees medially and line up the central ray to the proximal shaft of the femur so that the anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS, is on top of the image receptor. 
For a lateral mid and distal femur projection, ask the patient to rotate their entire body towards the affected side. Flex the knee of the affected side 45 degrees. Extend the opposite leg behind the affected limb. Make sure that the lateral aspect of the femur and knee are in contact with the tabletop. Align the distal femur to the center of the image receptor, set the central ray to the mid shaft of the femur and include the knee joint. For a lateral mid and proximal femur, the patient is positioned as for the previous projection. If using a protective shield, make sure that it does not obscure the hip joint and upper femur. Position the central ray to the proximal shaft of the femur and collimate to include the ASIS, hip joint, proximal to mid femur, and soft tissue structures. Expose, process, and analyze the images for all projections. To obtain an AP projection of the hip, select the table bucky and large focal spot setting on the control panel. Set the exposure parameters to between 70 and 75 kilovolts and 10 to 20 MAS. First select a 10 by 12 inch cassette and orient it lengthwise in the table bucky. Check pelvic symmetry. Gently palpate the anterior superior iliac spines to confirm they are equidistant to the tabletop. Instruct the patient to extend their legs and separate them slightly. Align the central ray perpendicular to the center of the image receptor. Rotate their leg and foot medially 15 to 20 degrees and align the hip joint to the center of the image receptor. Set the central ray to the neck of the femur, which is 1 to 2 inches medial and 3 to 4 inches distal to the ASIS. Collimate to include the inferior aspect of the ilium, hip joint, superior and inferior pubic rami, proximal femur, and soft tissue structures. Place the appropriate lead marker. Expose the cassette. To obtain a unilateral frog leg hip projection, flex the leg of the affected side and gently abduct the femur to 45 degrees from vertical. Align the hip joint to the center of the image receptor. The thigh and knee can be supported with a sponge. Position the central ray to the neck of the femur. Line up the image receptor with the central ray. Collimate, expose, and process the cassette as for the earlier projections. Analyze the images obtained.